What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of the Bundesliga career mode. It is episode number 29. It's win and win the title today. Yep, final episode of the season, getting straight into it. Uh, basically, very simple scenario here on the final day. We're too clear of Bayern Leverkusen heading into match day 34. And because of the gold and swing, realistically, all we need is a point, let alone a win, in order to be champion. So for context, they're away against Wolfsburg, who they themselves may need to win to guarantee that sixth and final European spot. And as for Bayer Leverkusen, they're away against Augsburg right now in 17th place, needing to win to escape the automatic relegation spot. So both teams do have something to play for on the final day. Opponents, should say, do have something to play for, including us in a straight shootout for the title. But again, because of the goal difference, I'd say all we need is one point to win the championship. So let's get straight into it. First and only game, it's the final game of the Bundesliga season, match day 34, where a point will all but guarantee the Bundesliga title, and a win, of course, mathematically confirms it as well. Let's go get the job done and win our first championship of the save. Come on, come on. And heading into the final day, I'm not sure if I would have showed it or not, just in case I didn't. Um, Maxime needs three assists to equal the Thomas Muller record of 21 in a single league season. I mean, he could get it, but... Yeah, we're not thinking about it at all, man. We're not thinking about it at all. Just get a point. Get a point, win the title. Free mathematically guarantees it anyway as Martel comes in and almost got his first goal since returning from injury. But we, we go for the win, man. We go for the win. It's always such an interesting thing when a team only needs a draw to get something, you know, be it European qualification or a title, for example, or relegation safety. Do they go for the point or do they go for all three? Yeah, we're always going to go for all three, man. It's within our nature. Perfect start. As DJ shot is blocked and we always got the opener. And I did put on the goal updates for the uh, for the Leverkusen game as well. But of course, don't forget, you've got to take them with a pinch of salt. They actually came in accurately in the last game, which stunned me because that's a rarity. <laughs> Tillman will play that wide to Derek, runs onto it, whips one in. And I think Martel would have been offside anyway. Um, yeah, the goal updates in the last game actually came in completely accurately in a 2-1 scoreline, but I'll keep, I'll keep you posted. If any do come in in that top right, I'll, uh, I'll let you know. But again, Leverkusen must win and we must lose. Realistically, that's the only way top spot can change hands on the final day. As Vanderson does really well there. Um, I'll tell out to Teal. We'll play advantage there, please, ref. Thank you. Keep going. And go! Yes. Keeping it very, very calm. But it's the perfect start. We've been on it from the first whistle. Like I said a moment ago, like when, when a team only needs a point or only needs a draw to confirm something, I, I always feel like don't don't think about the situation. You know, don't give too much thought to it. Just play like you ordinarily would. And you ordinarily would want to go for all three points anyway. Because sometimes when you only want a point, only want a draw, whatever, you can be a little bit more defensive. You can recede into yourself a little bit more. And that can invite some pressure, which at times can be hard to deal with. But if you're just going for the win, like naturally, play your natural game. I think that's when you're at your best, when you don't put extra pressure on yourself. What a season now he's, he's had, by the way. That's eight for the year now. And so as the halftime whistle is about to come on the back of that poor pass there. As things stand, we are going to win that first title since 1978. It's been an almost five decade away for another German championship. Right now, it's ours to bottle from here. Leading by one. We've got no guard updates from Leverkusen anyway, but even so, we're doing our job. That's the most important thing. Uh, we've just seen... Ah, oh, there we go. And that's the first goal update of the afternoon. And it's Leverkusen restoring a lead there, it appears, to go up by two goals to one. So we, didn't, we didn't get the first two goal updates. Like I said earlier, like they're just so inconsistent. You can't... You have to take the, uh, the goal updates with a pinch of salt, but... Max, oh, I took it away too early. I, I thought he was going to get caught up there. But as things stand, Leverkusen are going to push us all the way. But again, because of the goal difference swing, even a point would be enough here. As things stand, unless we can see two in 26 minutes, this is our championship. And there's been another goal there, and Leverkusen have now gone 3-1 up. So that, that confirms it. Bayer are going to do their job on the final day. But they're still going to come up short regardless. And, oh, that could have confirmed it there. But, yeah, we're still leading by winners. There's been very little going on in the second half, man. You could say it's nerves, but really... 
we just haven't really been threatened until now. And if Wolfsburg do score here, well, no, Bissette, well done. It will make things a little, a little nervy. But yeah, I think, I think we're going to be all right now. And we definitely will be as Max is brilliantly well there. And this could do it. Thielman. Maxime for the championship. Nearly 50 years without a national title. The wait is over. It's, I mean, it's not really limbs, is it? We talked about this before, but come on here. You've got, you've got to improve the, the crowd reactions. They're just... I mean, you know, there, there are some celebrations, and granted, don't get me wrong, we, we know that unless we can see two late ones, it'll be ours anyway. But come on, that's the goal that wraps it. That's the goal that confirms it. That's the goal that will start the engraving on the trophy. Come on, man. Where are the limbs? Don't you just, you say, oh, yeah, well done. Well done, Max. Nice, nice finish, son. Like, come on. FC Cohen have won three national titles, two Bundesligas and an old German first division, if you will. But it's free total. And this is going to be title number four. The first time since 1978. So it'll be officially, I think, 49 years since that last one. And uh, with the pressure, with the scrutiny, with the possible talk about Doxy Boy underperforming, well, I think it's safe to say my job should be safe for another year. Pushed all the way to the final day, and it's 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 deja vu just with the shoe on your foot because we did this last year with Dortmund, took it all the way to the final day. But just like Dortmund last season, we held our nerve to complete to collect a championship. It is first of the season, one league title, one DFB Pokal, and two major honours in two years. Come back on top of Germany. I'm not going to say it was an anticlimactic final day, but I do feel as though had we needed to win on the final game, I would have been a lot more nervous than I was pre-game. Ultimately, all we needed to do was avoid defeat, and I felt incredibly, incredibly confident at happening pre-game. And in the end, we do run out reasonably comfortable 2-0 winners to lock up again that first league title of the season. I, I don't I, I think the board would be very harsh for us this year, by the way. Like I really do. Getting those performance review meeting scheduled emails, which are the first time I've had that, I think. Uh, yeah, first time I've had that throughout the save. Um like really? Really? Granted Champions League was a slightly earlier knockout than we would have liked, as you see in the end there, Leverkusen beat Augsburg 4-1. But um we went to the DFB Pokal semi-final, like the board asked. We just won the league title, like the board asked. I think hitting two of your three objectives is is pretty good, right? Now, don't get me wrong, at top level football, I listen. I I understand it. I understand it. You know, it's it, it's it's very very. Um, I'm not sure what the word is here. You have to Wolfsburg relegated. What what are you? They were sick for you. I tell you what, the interviews as well. We talk about the goal that they's needing a revamp. The interviews definitely do as well. Um, but yeah, I lost my train of thought, but even so, yeah, we, we, it's a good season. It's a really good season, and so I, I don't feel now that we should be under any pressure. The manager rating stays at a thumbs down and a weak uh, consideration. But ultimately, we just won the league title, the first in five decades. Yes, okay, DFB Pokal gutted not to retain it, but the board only said reached semis. We did that, and we were only one round shorter than the board won in Europe as well. I, I feel confident I'll be staying here for next year. So, full look at the final league tail at the end of the season then, as you can see, uh, once again, best defensive record in the division, only 22 conceded in 34 games. I'd love to get that under 20 goals if possible, I don't think I've ever done that uh, in, a, uh, in a league season. But uh, finishing two clear in Everkusen, to, to be fair to them, to be fair, pushed us every step of the way. They didn't slip up in any of their remaining, I think it was six or seven games, so fair play, man. Talk about pushing us every step of the way. But it's, it's so cool how in the entire sale we've done four seasons now. Every four years, there's, there's been a different winner. First Leipzig, then Bayern, 
then Dortmund, and now us. So maybe next year it would indeed be Leverkusen's or possibly a wild card like Union Berlin, Stuttgart or Wolfsburg. Because they were 5th, 6th and 7th with the top 4 being us, Leverkusen, Dortmund and Bayern Munich. Uh, I'll be like to get Frankfurt 9th and Hoffenheim and I wrapping up the top 10. And as 40 bottom 3 on the final day, well, in the end, no change. Darmstadt will play the playoffs, but Augsburg are down to the second tier alongside Hamburg as well. As for the individual statistics, uh, Jao Pedro won the golden boot this year, hence why Union Berlin had such a great season with 24 goals and 34 and Victor Boniface was in second. Our top scorer was indeed Johnny Burke out of 18 and 30. So excellent ratio there for the man who came in to replace Davy Selka. A lot of pressure on his shoulders. And I'll tell you what, he certainly answered the phone call, no doubt about that. But he was our only top scorer in the top 25. But as for assists, though, once again, Maxime did indeed win his third assist title in four years and win it back to back with 18 and 30. Had he not had the injury, he might have been able to re- re- equal the Thomas Muller record, but still finishing free short. And that just goes to show you how unbelievable that Thomas Muller record is. 21 in 34 games, man, that's crazy. But Max will go for it again next year with Tillman in second for assists. And uh, Federico Chiesa was in third, as we had several other players in the top 25 as well but as for the golden glove no shocks there we said at the start of the season do we extend this contract or do we just let him go and saw me that release clause I think it's safe to say we made the right call. 18 clean sheets in 34 games, averaging over one in every two. Schwab showing there's life in those old bones yet, with yet another golden glove. Of course, you know he won't make the team of the season, annoyingly, as Jao Pedro won the Player of the Year award. Oh, he did! Oh, no way for the first time! What? Finally! Why is... What? That's bizarre. It, it never, it never happens. Normally, when you're, when you're keeper... Um, but that means that the goalkeeper, hold on a second guys, that means the goalkeeper tournament must not, it did go to Schwab, wow, finally, maybe it's been patched in a recent, uh, a recent uh, update, we just had a new update for SC, maybe it's been patched, but ordinarily the goalkeeper of the tournament would never be the man, if it's your goalkeeper that wins it and gets in the team of the tournament, um, I should say the golden glove would never get in the team of the tournament, but this year it has, so maybe, well, do you know what? Thank you, EA. Thank you. About time. But it seems that it might have fixed that bug there. But Schwab, rightfully so, Golden Glove winner and in the team of the season alongside Derek and Antonio Rudiger. DJ for the third in four years, man. You love the kid alongside Vanderson. Uh, the midfield four is Chiesa, Morgan Gives White, Maxime and Jan Tillman. I have to say, I don't think he deserved it this year, but there you go. And the top two, Jao Pedro and Marcos Leonardo. Thank you, EA. About time you fixed that bug, man. Seriously, Schwab getting his flowers and rightfully so. Ha. <sighs> And uh, a day after winning the championship, uh, the board still wish to inform me that my position at the club is currently under close observation. <sighs> don't know what to say about that. Don't, don't know what to say about that. First league title in, in nearly five decades. Guys, come on. Seriously? I, I, I still feel confident. I often say if you, if you hit your league objective, then nine times out of ten, you're fine. But this year... This year, was it Patel that won a uh, pro deal? Yeah. This year, I have to say, with the way that uh, the, the, the board view you this year, with the way that players are so you know quick to want out when they haven't been getting played every single Carabao Cup game, this year, maybe, maybe it's a different one this year. But I, I feel confident. I feel confident I'll take two of our three on the pitch objectives will be all right. But I guess we'll see. And to be fair, just uh, just promoting Patel there meant that we hit our youth development objective or one of the youth developments. So we'll we'll miss the other one because uh, we don't have any defenders in our, uh, in our academy. Um, and we'll fail that brand exposure objective of signing two young players and the reduction of, uh, of player wage. That's a long-term objective there. So we, we've, hit, we've hit the majority. We've, I, I know we've hit half. We've hit half. Uh, no, one, two, three, four. I, I can't count. I can't do maths. But I, I think I think we'll be all right. We've just got up to 55 now on the back of that youth development one. So I, I, think, I think we'll be okay. And so as you take a look at some other competitions in Germany and around the world as well, beginning with the DFB Pokal. Well, of course, this was our trophy last year, but not this time. Knocked out in the semis by Bayern on penalties. And in the end, Leverkusen beat them to ensure they would get a major on it this year after we picked them to the league title. So they are DFB Pokal winners this year. And as for the two league and the free league, well, FSV Mainz are back up as champions alongside side Hanover and VFL Bochum went into the playoffs this year to take on Darmstadt and I believe for the first time in the save it was the Bundesliga team who managed to cling on to their top tier status yeah Bochum losing out to Darmstadt who are remaining in the Bundesliga what's it going to take for Schalke to get back to the top tier man I, I missed the Veltins Arena man I want the lads from Gelsenkirchen back but as for the free league it was Braunschweig, Schaerbrook and uh, the top two and Weisbaden will uh, take on the uh, the relegation uh, 
playoff, if you will. As for the Europa Conference League this year, well, as you will see, there was an English side going all the way to the final. But they came up short. Liverpool losing to Athletic Bilbao by a goal to nil in the Conference League final. As for the Europa League this season, well, in the end, Celtic knocked out Aston Villa to be a Scottish side making the final four this year. Coming up short to Real Batiste, who went on to win the whole thing, beating Fiorentina 2-1 in the Europa League final. And I love that. Sevilla may be the kings of the Europa League, but it turns out it's not Sevilla as a club, but Sevilla the city. Real Batiste doing it in the absence of their uh, crosstown rival. But as for the Champions League, a look at the full groups here, of course, we made it through. Only to be knocked out by AC Milan on pens in the last 16 and a heartbreaking defeat there. I really thought after I went to the San Siro, we were going to make it through. Even so, they themselves got to the semis by knocking out Manchester City and beat Inter in an all-Milan final to take on Real Madrid in the final. But came up short. Yep, Real Madrid winning it once again. Run from it, dread from it, dread it. The Galacticos always arrived. They've won yet another one. As for some other leagues around the world, starting with the Premier League, uh, Chelsea on top in the Premier League for the first time, I believe, in a save. One clear of Arsenal and five clear of Man City, uh, with Manchester United wrapping up the top four in England's Premier League this season. And of course, we'll do the Football League. Don't forget, Everton were relegated last season and they've bounced straight back up. 108 points will be an official record, uh, finishing one clear of Bournemouth and six clear of Leeds. Look at that, three team Centurions. <laughs> The I swear every year though, the championship always has at least one team, 100 plus points, it's ev every single year I swear man honestly, and the bottom three, Rotherham, Derby and Barnsley. League One's top two was Plymouth Argyle and Sheffield Wednesday with the playoffs being Bolton, Huddersfield, uh, Peterborough and the Royals as well with the bottom three being Doncaster, bottom four sorry, being Doncaster over Shrewsbury Town, Wrexham and Notts County. And as to the fourth tier, Colchester United champions with Salford City and Carlisle United automatically promoted and the playoffs being Exeter City, Port Vale, Fleetwood Town and Stevenage in this year's fourth tier of English top flight. Bromley going to the fourth tier by the way, Big Byron Webster, Millwall fan favourite, getting him up with a winning penalty too. Anyone see that? The smirk? Oh, that was ice cold man. Yeah, I've got a bit of a soft spot for, wow, Stad Rene finishing six clear of PSG who really fell off it this year. Uh, Bromley, uh, they're not like a feeder club of ours. I, I keep saying, I don't know if I'm allowed to say ours anymore. But Millwall, anyway, Millwall have a bit of a, uh, a relationship with Bromley. Often send our youngsters out on loan to them. Um, but anyway, uh, Stad Rene, champions of, uh, of of Ligue 1 this year. And PSG dropping the third. As for the Serie A, uh, Juventus back on top. One clear of Inter and seven clear of the Champions League runners-up AC Milan with Lazio in fourth in the Italian top tier this year. PSV, uh, nine points clear at the top of the Eredivis to win the Dutch top tier of Ajax in second. Final in third and Azad Altmar in fourth in the Netherlands this year. The Liga Portugal saw Benfica crowned champions nine clear of Braga who split the uh, the traditional big three uh, in FIFA career mode with Sporting in third and FC Porto in fourth. Normally it's always uh, you know Benfica, Sporting and Porto and Braga Go normally finished fourth or fifth, but this year going into uh, into second place, fair play. At the end of the first phase in the Cinch Premiership in Scotland, uh, Rangers ten clear of Celtic. That's one of the biggest gaps I've seen in uh, in the Scottish top tier. At the end of the first phase, as I always say, you've got a shooter went on to win the whole thing. And as for La Liga, it is a league and European double for the Galacticos. Real Madrid finishing five clear of Barcelona, Atletico Madrid in third. And uh, Real Sociedad in fourth in this year's Spanish top tier. And we'll do three more whilst I'm here, starting with the Swiss top tier, where young boys ran out champions. I've said this before, I, I think that the next Red Bull franchise is going to be in Switzerland. Don't, don't ask me why, I, I, I can just see it. I can just see it. I think the next expansion team will be in Switzerland. But anyway, as for the Turkish Super League, uh, Fenerbahce 13 clear of Galatasaray uh, to win the Turkish top tier this season. As Doxy Boy resists the temptation to praise the country with all his might. And as for the MLS, uh, LAFC and LA Galaxy, are Los Angeles 1 2. Uh, LAFC right now are 7 clear of LA Galaxy. And I believe that, yeah, well, I think we just see it. I think Messi's retired and we can see the devastating aftermath of that into Miami right down in 20th place this year. And so to end the season finale and season four as well, we'll take one final look at the squad, the team management, the team sheets to showcase our star rating and also the squad hub as well with an individual look at the statistics and the attributes of our players as well. I've got to say, heading into the next season, defending the league title for the first time, hoping to re 
reclaim our DFB Pokal and go further in the Champions League, crucially as well after this year getting knocked out in around 16. Looking at the team here, Johnny Burka, I don't think we need a new striker. I think he's going to start growing again from next year onwards. We could possibly look at bringing in a new left back, maybe, or possibly a new DM slash CM because both Martel and Martins had mid-term injuries this year. But I don't really know, to be honest. I'm going to play it by ear. We'll find out what our budget is for the next season, and then we'll look at where we should improve next year. What I like about the team is it's really balanced. It's really, really balanced. We know that Sven Ulreich is going to retire at the end of the season. Thank you for your service, Sven. Two years here, played one game, I think. What did I say, man? This guy's got winner's experience as a backup goalkeeper. He brought that to the dressing room. Winner's experience, and he helped show us what's required to win major honours. Two in the two years he spent. I think it's safe to say it was worth the free transfer. But, um, but yeah, I think we'll play it by ear for next season, as Jonas has now grown two ratings out on loan with uh, Saad Harim in, uh, in France. Uh, Henrik Thomas has grown two with Darmstadt as their backup goalkeeper this year. Schmidt, by the way, he's up four out on loan in Belgium right now, so you'd love to see that with KRC Genk. 95 kicking. Unbelievable, man. But, um, but yeah, we'll see what happens to the new season. But, yeah, I really like how balanced the team is, man. Yeah, you could say Mood is like one or two weaker spots, if you will, such as left back with Derek or maybe, again, LCM or, or RCM with uh, Leandro and, uh, and, uh, and Martel. Possibly we could improve upon that. But really, for the most part, it's just a very nicely balanced team. It's, it's growing well. We've got a, a, a nice, again, sort of balanced team of some senior players like Schwab, for example, some younger players like Derek and Maxime, but also a lot of players in their mid-20s as well. Ronnie, by the way, is going three ratings out on loan with Bournemouth, getting them back up to the top tier for next season. Is he, is he coming back this year? Or is he? Oh, he's coming back, yeah, this year. That's a shame. I was hoping he'd stay there at the Vitality. DJ, though, uh, growing three ratings this year. Missing those two penalties in the shootout, though, man, that's got to hurt the kid at just 21 years old. But to be fair, without DJ, we wouldn't have won this Bundesliga title this year. He had some standout performances, including that game at the Bayern where he locked up Victor Boniface. Um, still getting better. I think by next year, he'll probably be 85, 86 coming into the, the season as well. So DJ still getting better, just 21. You'd love to see that as well. Uh, Vanson, what, what a great signing. He was growing three ratings this year since coming in from, I think it was Bill Bow we signed him from in the end. But up three ratings, you know, it's the third year in a row we've had a new right back. First it was, well, fourth year technically. First it was Jaleur, then Baku for new signings, I should say. And then this year, Vanderson. But unlike the past two years, I'm not a cinema right back. Not, not for season five. Vanderson staying with me, man. This kid. It was my first time using him this year. He got me six goals from right back. And including one on his debut that won us the Super Cup as well. You'd love to see that. Uh, Daniel Dennis out on loan with Rangers. Helping them win that first phase in Scotland, it appears. has grown two ratings there. And I think he's still got another year there. Yes, he does indeed. Uh, Ibrox, uh, Ibrox, sorry. Uh, Oz Karen grew a rating to 81 overall. Not sure he'll stay, though, in the summer. He's... he's, he's not going to get much better than 81 overall now. And at 29, he's a, he's a standing DM. The only thing that kind of saves him here is his homegrown status. He's a, a Cologne born and bred lad. Um, he, uh, he, he came through the Youth Academy. And so, that being the case, as Martel grew a rating this year, once again, though, the injury really stopped him developing even further. It's the third year in a row he's had a mid-term injury, which is stopping him hitting his full potential. But uh, yeah, we'll, we'll see if Oz can stay. Sully Minor might go as, well, go as well. Grew two rates, 79 overall. Probably not going to get much better now. But I like him just to fill in when either Martel or Leandro or Oz can needs a breather. And he got his first goal for the club. And what a goal it was. The dagger at the Bayer Arena in that massive 2 0 win against Leverkusen. Uh, Roy, by the way, has grown nine ratings out on loan right now. You love to see this this young uh, Indian defensive midfielder that we identify as a bit of a problem at six foot six. He looks like a really talented player. And he's got another year out on loan at Al Hassem as well. Uh, Jan Nicholas Beste, six goals and four assists in 21 games. This guy is the definition of just getting it done when his number is called. Cool. Not all. Always the first name on the team sheet, often sat on the bench. But when he is given a chance to start, he never lets me down. I love this guy, I really do. And I've got no plans to sell him at all, as he still has four years left on his deal. Keep him happy. And uh, yeah, I want this guy to remain as my great backup winger. Cone Backer went out on loan to Aston Villa and grew three ratings in this short-term loan. He'll be back in the summer, but I might try and loan him out once again. 20 years old, 79 overall. Heck of a young Dutch talent, but in this team, he's just not going to get the game time. 
Uh, Leandro, what a signing. Brought him in from Udinese. Finally, ladies and gentlemen, we got him. Finally, we got him after wanting him since the very beginning of the save. He did grow our rating before the injury took that rating off, so back down to 82 overall, but... He's a heck of a player, you know. I, I wanted to sign a Luxembourg player for the first time ever for the niche, for the novelty. But in the end, he surpassed my expectations. Five goals and five assists in 19 games. And again, the only reason he didn't get more appearances is due to that injury. But he had a great first year for us, man. And a really, really smart pickup from Udinese. Uh, Hussein Basic, I don't know whether he'll stay in the summer. He's literally just here as a squad player now. So, I mean, I guess I guess we'll see. But he just gets minutes off the bench, really, in garbage time. Uh, Leo Fournier is growing seven ratings out on loan at Heron Veen uh, in the era de Vies right now. So we'll keep our eye on this young French midfielder. And there is Babu Patel. He's an exciting prospect, by the way. So I'm going to add him to the loan list and try and get him out next season. Hopefully he'll grow like his Indian compatriot. Uh, Lefebvre came back from his loan spell in January. He's growing a rating and once again we'll try and loan him out for the new season. He's got some excellent technical ability but he needs to play if he is going to develop. So we'll add him to the loaners and try and get him out in the new season. But his compatriot Maxime Another fabulous year from Mad Max, going three ratings to 83 overall. 18 assists in 30 Bundesliga games. He might have fallen short of that Thomas Muller record of 21, but he wasn't far off it, that's for sure. And he might have equaled it had he not got that injury towards the end of the season. But what a player. This dude is unbelievable, man. Seriously, he's just such... A player, and again, we said before he could he could definitely play LCM. He played LCM in the first season, so I'm not against converting him back to CM and then looking for a new CAM in the summer or starting best day more. If we have Leandro come off the bench, I don't know. It kind of all depends what happens with Oscar kind of silly man, really. But I guess we'll see. But Maxine getting better and better and better, and like DJ out of the academy. And just a wonder kid, if we've ever seen one. Yeah, possibly the next KDB. This dude continues to look unbelievable, and you love to see it. Muller uh, has grown six ratings out on loan right now at the Riverside with Middlesbrough. Is he back in the? Uh, is he back in the summer? No, he's got another year there, so fair enough. But uh, yeah, looking really, really good there at the Riverside. No, hang on, he is back in the summer. No, he's not. He's back next year. But there you go. Uh, Jan Tillman, though, we said this year for Tillman. The, the the cool thing I liked about Jan Tillman since the save began is that he just got better and better and better. From season one to season two, he got better. From season two to season three, he got better. But for season three to season four, he just goes to show you that progress over time isn't always linear. He wasn't that great this year, but he was outside of the Bundesliga. Yeah, only four goals in the Bundesliga, a low return for him. But he did get nine assists, but it was in Europe where he really excelled. Three goals and four assists in all of our eight Champions League games. He was he was a killer in the group stage. And he also got three and three in the DFB Pokal plus an assist as well. So the Bundesliga, he was, he was all right. But it was really outside of the league where he really excelled. But even so, our vice caps went up two ratings. And even though he was a little bit less good this year compared to last year, he's still a starter on that left-hand side. Man, we love Jan. Ansgard scoring the first of our two on the Bundesliga final day as well. Eight goals in 32. He was brilliant this year, averaging one in every four in the league and getting three assists as well. Grew a rating to 83 overall. And hopefully at 25 years old, he was still continue to get better, growing one rating this year, but I'm hoping I can still get him into the mid-80s if possible, and he scored four goals in eight in the Champions League as well. Uh, Sade, not giving me much off the bench, I have to say, not growing anymore at 25 years old, I might possibly look to cash in in the summer. I do like him, but we've got some he- we've got some serious talents right now on loan, such as Cohen Backer. Um, I might look to sell him in the summer, get a, get a bit of money for him. He's not growing anymore, and just put the kid Cohen on the bench instead. I guess we'll see as Kevin now isn't getting any better. Volt is growing three ratings out on loan at Elche in La Liga. Jatta, just a squad winger now. Again, might look to sell him in the summer. I guess we'll see. He doesn't really play. Just garbage time minutes, really. So I guess we'll see. Laporte, though, he's growing five ratings out on loan in Turkey right now. 76 overall. Keeping a very close eye on him with Adana Demirspor. And as for Justin, by the way, for those curious on his development... Grew two ratings off and I didn't play. What a shame, man. What a shame. Why did you give him number nine? This is like Steve Sidwell getting the number nine at Chelsea under Mourinho. Why give him the number nine? Come on, guys. Seriously. But Justin's coming back in the summer. And again, I don't know what to do with Justin. I really don't. He's a heck of a young player, but he needs to play. He needs to play. And he's not going to play here behind first Selka, now Burka, and possibly Benjamin as well. I don't know what to do with Justin. Do we cash in? Just get some money? 
I don't know. I don't know. We'll think about it in the summer. But as for Benjamin, came back from his loan spell at Hull in January, scored a goal and got three assists in nine Bundesliga games. Crucially, he got an assist against uh, Darmstadt in that late level of there uh, in what was a big point for us. You remember that one? It was a heck of a free ball to Johnny Burkhardt too. But in the summer, I don't know whether to keep him as a backup forward or loan him out. He's still got that potential to be special, but he needs to play. He's got to get the game time. And here, he's just not getting it. So yeah, I have him off the bench. Yeah, I bring him off the bench quite often, but... He's got to be a star in order to develop, I believe. Lenny V was out of contract come the end of the season, but I think I probably will give him a new deal. 21 years old, up to 73 overall, and still getting better as well. Only played garbage time this year, but can I remove him from the transfer list? Can I, can I give him a new contract? I'll, I'll find out. I'll let you know what happens in the summer anyway. But uh, Shooter's up five, the Swiss centre forward with SMK and Burkhart grew a rating this year 18 goals and 30 and 6 assists in 30 games as well up to 82 overall and I do believe even though he's got holes on his attributes this year I do believe for next season onwards he'll get rid of those holes and start developing quicker again he's only 26 he's still a young man he's got plenty of time to get better and I do believe for next year he will get better and he'll stay as our starting striker and as for Limperle I think I might send in the summer. Just plays garbage time for us now. Not growing at 74 overall. Barely gets any minutes at all. And at 25, I might just cash in in the summer. But like Oscar, the reason I've kept him is because he is homegrown. But that will do it for today's episode and the season finale as well. So guys, thank you so much for watching the finale of season four. If you've enjoyed then please do drop a like. FC Cologne are back on top of Germany for the first time in five decades to add the DFB Pokal we won last year with our first Bundesliga title to save as well. Next year we'll be able to reclaim that Bundesliga title. We'll be able to we'll be able to retain it, sorry, reclaim the DFB Pokal and go further in the Champions League. But if we're going to do that, I think we need to make some big transfers in the summer window so in the next episode we'll return with a brand new season playing the summer transfer window and you won't want to miss it so I'm sure we're going to make some big transfers hopefully fingers crossed touch wood a big transfer budget for the first time in the save thank you for watching season four as a whole the save as a whole and the finale as well guys I'll be back tomorrow morning with a brand new season our fifth year at the Ronage Stadium beginning aiming to go further in Europe and retain that Bundesliga have a great day much love and I'll see you for a brand new season very soon